Hello everyone very good morning and good evening welcome to the next episode of Game of Fire Flyers And our today's high flyer is Pankaj Gupta uh, so Pankaj is with uh, us he has done the sourcing and procurement training he has done the uh, job hunt uh, uh, mastery also he has done so let me give you a brief uh, background about Pankaj So uh, Pankaj has around 16 plus years of SAP experience out of that 6 uh, to 7 years he has worked on the core functional functional part and uh, sorry core uh, uh, technical part and then there he thought about that now he need to move to the to the functional side and then he from there he started moving into the uh, functional side of uh, it uh, starting moving to the techno functional and then he did training with us to get a full total grip on the uh, functional module so from the techno function then he completely switches career to the functional part don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest sap video so this this uh, we are recording this uh, specifically for the people who are into the technical i i a lot of people came to me they are from the technical background they asked that whether we can move to the functional whether it would be possible whether it is possible to become a techno functional and from techno functional to functional consultant and i found that pankaj story exactly meet he started with the core uh, uh, core technical and then techno functional and then he moved towards the full functional roles and now he is having a very strong command on the uh multiple logistics module including which sourcing and procurement is the lead one so that story and that talk is definitely going to help all of the technical persons who are looking forward to take a career into the functional part so with that brief introduction i would be welcoming uh, pankaj pankaj welcome to the game of five flyers thank you parvind sir thank you for having me here So yes. Pankaj, it, it was a great story of yours. Uh, if you would be telling in your words, it would be even much better. So you can let us know. You can let the viewers know that uh, uh, what things came in your mind when you started thinking of that you need to start your careers, you need to change your career profile, and it, 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 the functional touch need to be given, and then what kind of things you have done, what kind of actions you have taken to reach that goal. Uh-huh. I when I started my career, I started as a technical guy there. Mm-hmm. So in my first or second project itself, the management there they used to say, tell me, "Do not only concentrate on technical. Try to un- learn what the business do. Mm-hmm. Try to understand that. That will help you in delivering good solutions." Right. So yeah, it was from the starting that I was always interested in a bit of the business side also, not completely, and uh, the trigger came. in uh, in last few years that i have to now switch, switch to the completely functional when i see that uh, see what happens in india actually is that with your experience in the technical side the uh, growth perspective becomes very narrow right because in india we do not have much roles like technical architects and those mm-hmm. right and uh, experience grows like all the companies they look for for yeah, guys with 8 to 10 years experience mainly the is a senior guys right and if you are in the service industry finding project for the senior guys is always tough there <laughs> because they always want to keep the cost low <laughs> yeah right and with, uh, and with no technical architect type roles right either you have to switch to management side mm-hmm. right or then the in the instead of switching to management side i thought of okay i want to switch towards mainly towards the functional side because it uh, helps me in better understanding of the business and it opens a lot of perspective going further also mm-hmm. and uh, one of the trigger came for uh, last to last year okay uh, when we were doing a hackathon so there was a problem uh, stated by one of our, uh, one of the divisions of a company okay uh, the problem was pretty simple okay but when i try to solve it right the thing is i know how to do the technical things but then to do the the config thing and then to get to that solution that is something which i was missing there mm-hmm. and that told me okay uh without shifting to function i as how good i may be as a technical guy but i may not be able to provide a complete solution mm-hmm. right right that's where i thought okay now it's time to learn it so i tried to learn by myself also but that doesn't help uh because 
and as you guys know the internet is so vast and you may keep learning on the internet but unless it's structured you will not be lost in the sea it's something like that <laughs> yeah right right then, uh, i thought of taking a training one of my friends to uh, recommended me about uh, sastra geek mm-hmm. uh, he is taking an training here and when i uh, subscribed to this training it was wonderful the, mm-hmm. the training was re- has really helped me because it is a very structured way it helps started from like how to like configure the data first of all that is a big thing right and then how to do the uh, config the thing which was uh, which i was always missing here mm-hmm. and then they provided me the server access all the where i can play mm-hmm. play around and uh, and that helped me like uh, to creating my own scenarios and then whatever i was doing on the work side right try to create all those scenarios by myself here in the in the test system and that gave me a lot of confidence and it's uh, great to know that you by having even 16 to 17 years of experience you try to put your hands in and you run a lot of scenario for for yourself i always recommend to do a lot of system hands on sometime when people has a lot of experience 10 years 15 years plus they said ki just give me the knowledge system itself i will not go in <laughs> but that's good that's you you put your hands in then really you know that you know that with the discussions with the solution discussion or the hackathon discussions you would be able to speak with with a lot of confidence if you have done the things in the system so that's good yeah, yeah that helped me a lot and to then while doing it surely the doubts comes up at which we will not come up when you are just reading it right right correct. i think you think that do you understand everything but when you come to the system mm-hmm. you will see that okay this is something <laughs> uh and uh, when you will keep stacking there and then you have to do a bit of research on that mm-hmm. and try to find a solution so that was one thing that that helped me a lot like maybe if i tried to do the uh, scenarios by myself if i was stuck i asked them with my colleagues in my office okay i'm just trying to do this well, how to overcome this particular one i am facing this problem so first to go to point uh, i tried with them and then if they were also not able to solve it uh, then i I joined these doubt sessions, which we have in that training, right? There, I was able to, yeah, uh, th- uh, for the survey, able to clear more, almost all my doubts there. Then joined me. Yeah. Okay, that's great. That's great to hear. So, uh, Pankaj, that uh, you have gone through that now that journey, you was into the technical mode, and you have completely gone into the full functional training. So, uh, if someone else who's a technical guy and he wants to look for functional. how difficult it is for him whether he can really do it or it would be uh, difficult for him or what kind of challenges he will face or what kind of way he need to prepare himself so that he would be able to switch from the technical to functional okay one of the greatest challenge i see is the uh, i see is the mindset we as a technical can really limit ourselves to okay this is given to us just code this do a bit of just testing and give it for the functional to take care of the rest of the things we do not try to look at the uh, bigger picture mm-hmm. like where our solution fits and how is it going to help the business in the uh, in the business right so first of all first thing that we need to do is try to or like increase our horizon mm-hmm. try to see the big picture what we are doing why we are doing it and how is it going to help the business and i think that will help us to understand the business and once we start understanding the processes right what is going on in the business how they do it what they do it then it comes like now you know what is going on in the system what are all the scenarios can be then it's mainly like learning on the config side a bit uh, that is uh, there i think uh, yeah when you start sometimes okay i say i may be lucky that i didn't get very good functions <laughs> always <laughs> so when you have good functions so what happens is like they will give you everything and you will have no, no you will not have much thing to explore in last <laughs> yeah that's right that's right that's true i remember in the projects where i have learned more in one of the project i learned wm because my wm resource was not there in another project i learned qm a lot because qm uh, resource was not not that good i was leading and need to jump into a lot of qm processes so sometimes that's good when you have a weak, weak connections in your team that helps you to learn more that's right 
<laughs> right so if they are not good they will keep coming to you okay what is this what is that and then you explore start exploring on the those fronts okay mm -hmm. this is how it can be done or okay this can be done by standard rather than putting a check or putting a code for that so that was one thing and then the other mindset is always if any issue comes up we directly starts with debugging right. that is, we are always <laughs> and functions also comes okay this is not happening can you debug and tell us where is this error coming up? Right. So that is one thing. So what we may have to do is like, instead of just start debugging the standard, we can just try to think, okay, what may be the config there or just try to Google it. Okay, this might be missing, this config might be missing or just start thinking from the process point of view and from the standard point of view, how this SAP has designed its system. Hmm. So that is yeah. one thing. Right, right. And I think it would be very interesting for the technical consultant also to, to as you said, uh, knowing the bigger picture, right? right? And whatever the code which has been written, actually what impact it is going to do into the business scenario, or what kind of the business problem it's going to solve it. So right. if you know that, you know, you feel more interested and then you can generate more value even writing a code also. True. So I always recommend the technical people to learn functional and the functional people to learn technical. So for functional people to learn technical, even we have launched a course also about for technique, about for functional consultant. Because what happens that I have also feel that one of the best consultant, which we I say that even they are better than me. They are very good. I should follow them. When I see them, most of them are the techno functionals. They know the functional part, but even they also know the technical part. So uh, whenever they are suggesting something, suggesting them some solutions at the back end, they know the technical. So they know that what is the technical capabilities, whether this kind of solution, we would be able to deliver it or not, or how it would be delivered. So that architect is already working in their mind. That's why they are able to better consult the uh, clients. So yeah. I always prefer yeah. to become techno functionals. Right, I totally agree with you. Like. Uh... Most of the guys functional I've met is they do not know debugging or they do not know much on the technical side. But once you shift from technical to functional, like you know the both the worlds, you know how technically it will work or uh, what can be the issues when you like functions usually this is okay, do this, do this, do this. But they do not know how much time it will take or what uh, issues you might face during implementing right. it. Right, right. Shifting from technical to functional, you already know that uh, technical part. And you know that, okay, this might be taking a long time or this might uh, may not be fit, uh, technically feasible when you are uh, proposing any solution. And if you are stuck, you always have debugging skills with you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I, I always, you know, I have, I'm dealing with the both uh, people converting for technical into the functionals. Apart from you, there are two, three more people we have done that. And we have also trying that converting functional people into the techn technical, techno-functional, making them techno-functional. What I found is that a guy who knows the technical, right? He's a BAP or the technical part he know. It's more easy for him to learn the functional because yeah. the technical writing a code, uh, thinking that thing is more difficult than knowing a business process. But on the other hand, if we are trying that the functional people trying to make them the learn the technical part, the coding part, 90% raise their hands. <laughs> That's true. It's because of the mindset, really, because they have not done the coding, those things. Yeah. And they're afraid of that. <laughs> yeah, they are afraid of that screens. You know, you have a big screen and then letter, letter, letters only going on. So, <laughs> which, so that screen scared uh, many people. Right. So, yeah, that, that's good to know that you have overcome the challenges, you have overcome the mindset and you you become a functional consultant. That's very good to know. So, so my next question would be, so uh, you are the technical, now you become a functional. So what is the next game plan? Uh, to be a solution architect. To become a solution architect. Then, yeah, that, that should be the approach. That should be the approach. That's, the, uh, that's where I want to reach now. Right. Yeah, so you have covered the major milestone, the technical is done, functional, you have done the sourcing procurement. If you want to become an end-to-end -end solution architect, I would suggest you to add a few more modules into it. You can add SD because SD sales is the one which is widely used. You can also try to look for the FICO. FICO is in functional, we say it's the most difficult module. But if you can learn that, then FICO, um, 
uh, SDMM and uh, technical you already know you would be the boss of SAP. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Yeah, that's what like uh, I think the modules which integrate closely with MFA should be studying, but that's what and FI always integrates well with FI integrates with everything. Yeah, 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 yeah that's good. So uh, uh, one last question I have that what advice you will give to the aspirants uh, who are into the technical roles and they are looking forward to uh, move to the functional roles, what key advice you will give it to them? A key advice would be start looking at the bigger picture. One thing, start understanding the business processes mm -hmm. and then you can get involved, connect with your uh, functional team there. Try to understand what they are doing, why they are doing, or if possible, try to uh, mm -hmm. attend the meetings with them when they are having the meeting with the function uh, with the business. Mm -hmm. To understand that will help you in understand the business processes. And once you start understanding, or once you develop that interest of understanding the business processes, right, then it's just a matter of learning the config and those things. Mm -hmm. Because once you know how the well, business works, how it works, then while doing the coding you might have seen how to create a purchase order or a sales order those things that those things you might be already knowing right and then one more thing i will suggest is mainly what happens is we mainly depend on the function to create the test data we ourselves will not give our time okay that okay let me create the test set let me try it by myself what we'll say okay we are missing some test data in the fs or this thing we'll just ask function guys provide us the test data for it so what you can do is we can start try to create start creating the test data by yourself. So when you start doing that, you will start understanding how the system is working there, or if there is something missing, what is that missing, and then how to fill those gaps there. Right? Because once you start understanding those things, that config, I think you can learn config should not be a big problem. And maybe after all those things, if you after learning your basic, you once you have generated that interest, a good training will help you. Yeah, right, right. Your 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 advice uh, reminds me of something. The advice which I got very initial stage of my career. So uh, one of my boss uh, told me when when I just joined SAP, he told me, Parminder, whatever the scenario you want to run in the system, make sure for that scenario all of the master data you create on your own. Okay. <laughs> Don't depend on the another master data. Don't look for that. You will find some material or you will find some customer vendor and then try to run scenario. Try to create your own master data and run the scenario. You will be getting to know that process very clearly. That's what uh, has been advice given to me. And that's what same thing you have to also. Yeah, that's that, right. That was one of the challenges I faced, like creating the master data, finding that data. <laughs> like, if, like if you want to create a purchase or, a sales or anything, like you need that master data, you need that material, you need that vendor. Or, the purchase plant or all those things, right? Now, you may not be able to find the because there will be a lot of materials which you use in your company, right? which one to use and uh, which one has all the things which you want for your scenario, right? Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Uh, yeah, you material, material give a lot of learning. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. So I hope that this, this story would be helping you, uh, uh, will be helping all of the aspirants who are looking forward to change their profile from uh, technical to functional. I think that this discussion with the Pankaj would be very helpful. So Pankaj, we thanks a lot to you coming up here, sharing your thoughts, sharing your challenges and how you proceeded ahead. I, I hope that this thought would be helping a lot people uh, proceeding their career towards the function. So thank you for joining us in uh, in um, Game of Five Flyers. Thank you, Parmitasa, for having me here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. And we'll be coming back with the next story very soon. Goodbye, then.